Hey guys, it's Inigo, and today I'm gonna do a Inigo update, and um, it's been a while. I'm recording this during the day, which means there's gonna be planes and cars and and all that, but I felt like I had to record that or I will go crazy. Um, a lot has happened, as it always does. Lots of good, quite a lot of bad. But um, mostly it's just been going, I guess. I've been making videos, living my life like that. I did start a volunteer job at a social workplace, which uh, it's been quite something to adjust to, but I, it's been a positive experience thus far. But today I want to talk also about, about myself and especially about my, my struggles. I know that most of you probably know about some of the mental issues that I suffer from or have to deal with, uh, most notably my anxiety, which is one thing. Um, to give you a short explanation of, of how that all came to be, I guess. Um, when I was a young child, very young, I would be very curious, very excited. I was always interested in nature and I, uh, in languages, and I would um, I would collect all sorts of things. I collected minerals and stones, and and I would write essays about it. And I love to. Write and I would always be um, doing research into other cultures and languages. Um, and I was generally a pretty, pretty happy child. I was very excited to be alive and I had so many plans for the future. From a very young age, I always wanted to become a vet, like an animal doctor. Um, so that was always my, my goal. Um, when I started getting older and I went to school, of course, and for some reason, even while I was in kindergarten, I would always get bullied. I would get bullied because of my glasses, because of my clothing, because of, of my last name. Which isn't even that weird, just at some point the kids just find something to bully you with and it doesn't matter if it's something that's actually strange or out of the ordinary. And I got bullied and physically abused on a daily basis. And the bullying never stopped. Um, up until I was in college I was bullied pretty much every day and just completely disconnected from my from my peers and that made me a very complicated child I went through a lot of different reactions to that I would just hide away or I would lash out and hit back which often got me in trouble there was never one time that I was bullied that person who was bullying me got in trouble, but I had so many punishments because someone hit me and I hit back. I was always in the wrong place in the wrong time. Then when I got older, in my teens, I did find some people to connect with outside of school, and these were people that would be drinking and doing drugs and partying, and I slowly got into that. I, uh, it was finally a way out. 
I didn't have to feel the pain anymore. I didn't have to have to feel the anxiety, anything. And I did a whole bunch of stupid shit back then. I let myself get used by people, mainly by by guys and a lot of a lot of terrible shit happened. I hate calling myself like a, a victim, but when I was 13 years old, I was raped by a stranger. From 13 till 18, I was friends with a guy who he was the only person that I could talk to about the issues at home, my parents going through a divorce. My dad's having girlfriends with, you know, like a lot of children that to move in with us, all that stuff. And fights that I had with people, like drama going on, the bullying, and he, that person, was the only one that I could confide in. And when I was 18, he kind of just disappeared, and I did some research, and I found the contact information for what I knew to be his uh, girlfriend at the time. And I contacted her, them, they replied and said that he had just used me for those five years where he was the most important thing in my life, the most steady and stable and so that ended in that way which is a big, big trauma. a lot of other stuff that happened that it's terrible and I've been working on it in therapy for a long, long time. I started I started therapy when I was 13 actually. I'm almost 25 now. Anyway. So that's some of the stuff that, that went on in my life and Throughout the years, I got more depressed and anxious and disconnected myself more from from other people. I would spend days and days playing video games because I just didn't want to deal with any sort of reality. And it just got worse and worse and I felt that the therapy I was having didn't really work much. It was just like shaving up, the, shaving off the tip of an iceberg, and I feel like I've I've just tried it all at this point. Um, cognitive behavioral therapy, like just psychoanalysis, analysis. I don't know. It. I I did a lot of in-depth therapy, some even full-time therapy. And And my diagnosis as of now is generalized anxiety disorder, panic disorder, depression, ADD, which is uh, like ADHD but without the hyperactive aspect of it, um, avoidance personality disorder, and dependent personality disorder, which is all pretty bad already, but what I'm also struggling with, which is the most delibitating, is that a word? I think it is, for me at this moment, is PMDD. Now, a lot of people probably know about PMS, which is premenstrual syndrome, which is what happens uh, for most women every month. Uh, if you know anything about the menstrual cycle for women, um, you have uh, your period, and that's when you know the blood and tissue gets expelled. And then over the next month, it's gonna be building up again, so it can uh, 
like an egg could possibly nestle in there if it was um I don't know all these terms in English uh, you know when uh, when you have an egg and sperm going together I don't know what's the English term bevrucht that's what it is in Dutch anyway so uh halfway through uh one of your ovaries gives out an egg and you can actually feel that if you're a woman mostly uh, it's like a little blob <laughs> it's very weird anyway from that moment on uh, certain hormones plummet which has an effect on a lot of things and it's necessary for for the whole cycle so when this egg is traveling down to your uterus, that's basically when uh, obviously you're the most fertile fertilized, that's the word I was looking for earlier fertilized, okay and that's also when roughly your PMS starts and it lasts for about a week to two weeks until either you become pregnant or you don't become pregnant and your period starts and your uh, the lining of your uterus and gets disposed of. If you're grossed out by now, then you should really um, like reconsider your view on the human body and why it grosses you out because this is literally how you are made. <laughs> literally. Now, for most women doing this PMS period, which is after <coughs> the ovulation when the egg pops out um, a lot of women are more irritable and it's kind of like a stereotype if a woman is acting up in some way it's like oh it must be your period which is a terrible thing to say and if you're doing it you should feel bad because it's it's not nice now there are also some physical ailments like cramps and bloated and your breasts can be tender and, and all that stuff and it's it's different for everyone of course some women have it much more severe than others and for for this again it's very light but then you also have something that's classified as pmdd which um i'm on right now which makes me like it's hard for me to focus but i'll look up the what the acronym actually means and it'll be in the description but that's basically PMS on steroids not literally but it, it makes it extremely bad and some symptoms are extreme depression anxiety physical discomfort very irritable nearly um like I get really unfocused and like my head just feels really messy it's like I'm borderline psychotic almost I just can't deal with myself and I also become very very suicidal all I want to do is just cry and the world around me feels so unreal uh, I actually forgot to mention I also do have derealization, which is a dissociative disorder which is a, basically a symptom of anxiety disorder really I went over that in another video, anyway so everything just feels completely unreal and it sucks and I'm just in agony and there's two things that I want which is, well, three things. Firstly, I, I would like it to go away. Secondly, I want to die. And thirdly, I want to rip out my uterus. And this actually affects, um, I think, 8% of women, I think is a lot but no research is being done in it because it's just women being women right but it is a legit illness basically 
and it gets so bad for about two weeks out of four, so half, half the month, like half my life is spent in complete and utter hell, and I'm not exaggerating with that, it just is. And I'm explaining this because not just for you, mostly for myself to take the pressure off because I obviously I love making videos doing this is this is what makes me happy. This is what what I want to do for the rest of my life if I so can. But two weeks out of four, I am pretty much disabled completely. like I I try to do some stuff. I'm not happy it's not my best work. I just. I try to work as much as I can in these two weeks, but a lot of that time is dedicated to having to pick up the pieces, you know? Because I just, uh, just self-control, I let everything go, I can't keep up with my housework, uh, like, my hygiene, like, self-care, like, I don't, I'm just walking around in, like, <laughs> pajamas all day, I, I, I just can't get myself to do anything, and it's really terrible <laughs> because you're you're self-destructing for two weeks and then the two weeks after you you're you're doing damage control and then after and then after those two weeks are up your you know your number is up again and the most terrible thing is that there's no cure there's no treatment besides a full hysterectomy, which is, if you didn't know, the complete removal of the uterus and the ovarian tubes, which is terrible, which means you will be sterile, like you won't be able to have children out, and I want children, <laughs> but I, w I wouldn't be able to raise a child like this. I'm not, I'm not able to function normally, and what I'm doing right now is I'm taking supplements. Um, I'm taking magnesium, vitamin B, vitamin E, uh, omega-3, all that stuff, and it's supposed to help, but that's what, what the therapist says, but I don't know. I don't know what I'll do if it doesn't work. This is becoming very whiny, and I, I do apologize, but that's just my reality. And what I really wanted to say with this is that I sometimes can't keep up, oftentimes really, and I'm sorry, and I wish I could, because being able to do this is one of the only things that I think I've ever done right. And I want to keep doing that, but I can't push myself as hard as I would want to and as much as you might want to see my videos and I just can't do it. I'm gonna go under. And this doesn't mean I'm gonna stop making videos, but I gotta take the pressure off for myself. I'm not gonna be able to commit to, like, an every day or an every other day schedule. Sometimes it's gonna be a day extra, and when I do make videos, I'm gonna have to schedule them out for their part to have a buffer for Hell Week. I do wanna keep doing custom content, but less than I have been. But I guess mostly I just wanted you guys to know, and if you are listening to this, if you're a woman, if you suffer from this, then if you feel like you might, then go check it out because there there might be something that works for you, um, and you might be labeled as bipolar, but it might actually be this. So, and if you're a guy and if you're watching this, I am urging you to take it seriously. I guess. Because it's not just my hormones playing up. I mean, it is, but it's pretty terrible. 
It's just not great when people are making jokes about something that is literally ruining my life. So, I hope if anything you've learned a thing or two. Um, I'm not asking for sympathy. It frankly doesn't really do much, you know? Um, but I hope that you can understand that sometimes things just get pretty rough for me and it, it's hard to keep up even though I wish I I am able to so I'm not sure what I'll do if the supplements don't work um I know that in Holland they do, don't do a full hysterectomy for this reason they do in the UK um, maybe I'll just get like a back out It feels nice to, to at least have talked about it, I guess. Anyway, I'm sorry for the very depressing topic, but I just felt it had to be said. I will probably link some information in the description box that can state things more eloquently as I can. So, yeah, I do hope that you're feeling okay and that no matter what you might be struggling with, you're finding some sort of peace in there and love and happiness. I care about all of you a whole lot and I truly hope